the Rocky Mountain Crafter here with you. I have a really great card for you today. This has kind of got a little bit of a masculine feel to it, and it kind of has a out of this world feel to it too. And it was really fun to make. So I'm going to flip you guys around and show you how I did that. So I'm starting here with a moon mask that is put out by Stampers Anonymous in collaboration with Tim Holtz. And there are three different sizes in this mask. There's a small, a medium, and a large. But I show you afterwards here that there's another mask that I have that fits in to the second smallest here. And this is from a collaboration with Simon Says Stamp and Tim Holtz from the Stamp Timber 2021 kit. And I am just going to use the smallest one in the set. And so I'm putting a little bit of glue tape on the back of it just so that I can stick it down and it won't move while I'm doing my inking up here. So here I have my gel press and I'm putting on four different colors. The first color that I'm using is like a muddy yellow. It's like a curry kind of color. The second color is a very raspberry purple. So it has a lot of blue in it and a lot of red and it's it's more red than blue. It's very raspberry-ish. The third color is in navy blue, dark, dark navy blue. And the fourth is a beautiful teal color. So you can see that when I'm spreading the color out there, I'm getting this beautiful array of these four different hues that I've, I've put on to the gel press. And I just keep using my brayer to pick up that color and then to lay it down onto this piece of paper. Now this paper is thick very thick smooth paper it is one of the thickest copy papers that there is and it has a smooth finish so it takes ink beautifully and it really shows off those colors there now here i'm just trying to get as much ink onto around the moon as i can and i just keep picking up layers with the brayer and i just keep laying them down until i'm happy with it and here I show you how easy it is to clean up the gel press. So the inks that I'm using are dye inks, premium water-based dye ink, and they just wipe off nice and neatly with a wipe. If you were using another medium such as acrylic paint, you would have to take the gel press under your faucet and wash it down. But with the water-based dye ink, it just wipes up very nicely with wipes. There, I'm just putting it away, just tidied it all up and it's put away. Now I let it dry. I took the moon mask off to let it dry. Here, I'm just putting it back on. And then I'm grabbing some juniper mist here shortly. This is a very dark navy blue color by Catherine Pooler and I'm taking a blending brush, the smallest one that I have. I've tried using the bigger blending brushes, but what happens is that the ink isn't targeted enough in a small enough spot to get a nice dark color. But whereas when you use the small blending brushes, you can really I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you can really just hone in on one spot with the color and so you can get a nice dark color. And so I'm just picking up as much like really heavy handed onto all those white spots and just making them navy blue just to blend them in with this background. And here I'm just showing you that this moon mask just cleans up nicely with a wipe. Again, they just wipe off beautifully. And that moon was a little bright, so here I just took what was left on the, the blending brush and with the navy, and I just blended it a little bit darker. And here I'm taking a gray color. This is Catherine Pooler's again. And this color is Twilight. It's a gray. I just didn't want the moon to be so white. And I felt like if I left it white, that it would just be popping off the page. And that's not what I wanted. I really wanted it to blend in. So here I'm just taking a water brush and picking up some water paint. It has a little bit of a sparkle to it. And I'm just flicking it on there. 
and making sort of stars is my goal to make this sort of look like a a starry night or northern lights or something along those lines. So here I forgot to I didn't forget. I accidentally cut out of the video me cutting out the moon. But here I'm just making a hill for the wolf to sit on. So all I did there was just marked off my spot where I wanted him to be and cut what I thought looked good, like a rock cliff and, you know, like a grassy meadow area where some trees could go. And then I'm just taking my ATG gun here and putting it in place there. Now I do cut off the one side that's a little bit longer, but I don't bother cutting off that bottom edge because even though it's hanging off the bottom there, it's fine. I will make it part of my card. It's nice and straight, so I'm not too worried about it. And so <laughs> you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but I didn't love the wolf. Some of you are wolf lovers and I'm, I'm okay. I, I like, I like wolves. I just don't love them. So the set that I'm using here is Catherine Pooler's Wild About You for the animals and for the greeting that says greetings. It is called Cheerful Greeting Sentiments. And both of these have coordinated, coordinating dies with them as an extra. And so with the greeting here, I liked the word greetings because of the whole space feel. I just felt like greetings was appropriate. But what was important to me was to leave enough space at the top because this stamp set comes with other words as well, smaller ones, warm, so it could be warm greetings, or birthday, or sending. So I wanted to leave enough space at the top that I could add one of those words later, because I'm not sure who this card is going to be for. So I've put it into my Misty, and I'm just making, lining it up and making sure that there is plenty enough room for one of these other words in the future, which there is. And so here I'm just fast forwarding through putting the ink on. Now, when you use um, the regular ink by Catherine Pooler, that's just the premium dye ink, in a dark background like this, it just kind of blends in. So you need something a little bit stronger that is going to stay more on top of the paper. And for that, you want premium archival ink. And so that's what I used for the word greeting. That's what I used for the animals. They just uh, stay nice and black. So I here I'm stamping the elk or deer, whatever this might be, but I forgot to show you me die cutting it. But um, if you've had any experience card making at all, then you know how die cutting goes. And here I'm just putting that deer, we'll call it a deer. I think it's a deer. I'm putting him in the same spot that the wolf was. And I'm liking this much better. So there again, I forgot to videotape, just forgot to hit the button while I did these trees. So um, there's already three laid down there in that dark archival ink. But these trees also come with the stumps for them. So stems, stumps, trunks, trunks, they come with trunks. And so there I'm just showing you me putting the trunks onto the trees and then I figure that there's room over there on the left for another tree. So I hand stamp that guy into place. And so two of these trees I do in archival ink and two of them I do in just the regular alcohol, not alcohol, it's not alcohol ink, it is premium dye ink. And what happens is that when that premium dye ink dries, like I said, it blends into the background. So it kind of looks more of a shadow in the background and looks like I did three of those shadowy trees instead of two. Um, and so I'm just putting on some bling here. I decide that I want to do some actual stars that have a holographic kind of effect to them. So I'm just picking out what I have from Catherine Pooler's sequin mix here called kitchen sink and there I've got the stars laid down now after I had the stars on I actually went back and added more stars after I th thought that those five or seven whatever I had on there looked so great that I added more here I'm just uh when I'm doing a background 
like this, trying to figure out what cardstock I want my card onto. Um, you, you see that I did the gray and then now I'm doing a black card base. But I find that if you're having problems making it all go together, if you grab a layer that coordinates with something in your card, like the gray coordinated with the outline of the deer that I did on gray. And so that just ties it all in together. And it also tied in better with the moon because the moon has that gray color to it. And so I do the gray and the, oh, look at that do the gray and the black background and those stars that glisten. Yeah. So anyways, this is my card on how to make a beautiful starry night background. And I am on Facebook and Instagram and as the Rocky Mountain Crafter. And of course, you're watching my video here on YouTube. And if you like what you see, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button or you could hit the bell or you could hit both. And I thank you so much for watching. Take care.